Welcome back, everyone. Uh, earlier this morning, President Bola Antonio addressed the nation in a New Year broadcast, uh, during which he defended his actions so far as president, explained steps taken to better the economy, outlined his ambition as well as his broadened plans for the country, and then went on to sign the 2024 budget into law. So joining me tonight as we focus on the review of the president's tenor and cross-sectoral prospect for Nigeria in 2024 is a jury in Lali, special advisor to the president on media and publicity. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Ngilali. It's good to see you in the new year. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, my dear sister, and Happy New, new Year to all of our esteemed viewers. Right. So, it's a new year. How challenging will you describe 2023 for the administration? Well, I think there's little doubt uh, in the mind of any Nigerian uh, at home or abroad uh, that uh, the year 2023 was one uh, which was rife uh, with challenges uh, across the board, uh, not just obviously dealing with uh, the socioeconomic challenges uh, related to the very difficult but uh, universally uh, recognized to be uh, needed uh, reforms of uh, His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu with respect to the removal of the fuel subsidy and the ongoing unification of the foreign exchange rates in the country. Uh, but also uh, the fact that uh, you had uh, several uh, various uh, challenges emanating from uh, foreign territories that had a direct impact on uh, what is happening within our country. Uh, if you look at, for example, uh, the series of uh, coups, uh, and, and not just successful coups, but attempted coups uh, in the West African sub-region, and just how distracting uh, that was uh, for His Excellency Mr. President, who obviously doubles as the chairman of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government. Uh, you would recall that that was a, a major challenge, uh, something that is ongoing uh, in many respects. Then if you look at what's going on across the Middle East and Europe, and the impact that that has continued to have on global food and energy prices, uh, the fact that you have rising interest rates around the world, uh, so debt has become more expensive, uh, and uh, of course, uh, in, in new borrowing becomes that much more expensive with increase, uh, increased interest rates around the world. You combine all these factors and you'll know that uh, there is no way around the fact that Nigerians and indeed many citizens from around the world uh, are going through a difficult time. And that is something that I think uh, many, uh, many uh, Nigerians will uh, align with their memory of 2023 in retrospect. Now, with that said, uh, I think in as much as we all agree that uh, 2023 was a difficult year, uh, one uh, that we are happy to move on from, uh, I, I think it's also important to take uh, note of some of the progress that was recorded within 2023 as well. Uh, of course, uh, we conducted uh, a, a set of general elections uh, that uh, which uh, have been more or less characterized uh, as a free and fair exercise. Obviously, some elections had some challenges, particularly at the subnational level, uh, where we saw some of the National Assembly elections and some of the state governorship elections, you know, uh, see some level of, uh, you know, violent conduct and things of this nature. But for the most part, uh, we came through those elections without any major uh, catastrophic event with respect to human casualties uh, and things like this. So I think that was that was something good. Of course, uh, we have seen uh, several uh, reforms. I've, I've already alluded to two uh, under the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. But I think one of the areas where uh, we have seen uh, significant uh, progress has been, the, you know, understanding that uh, our people have to be carried along. The president has been uh, already in his first uh, six months or so in office has been one of the most vocal leaders uh, we've ever seen. Uh, we ha he has been open. He has been communicating with Nigerians with empathy, with sincerity, uh, with accuracy in his in his statements. Uh, and I think that this is a welcome change uh, for Nigerians who've really been yearning for uh, a f the feeling of connectivity uh, with the leadership in the country. That's something that I think uh, we've made a lot of progress on. Uh, in, in terms of policy, uh, 
I think as we go into 2024, uh, obviously a very important event held uh, just earlier today uh, with His Excellency Mr. President signing into law uh, the 2024 uh, appropriation bill. Uh, that is now an, an act of law, and we can now expect uh, that all of uh, the president's, uh, you know, renewed hope agenda uh, encapsulated really in that document uh, is going to come, uh, come to life in manifestation in the lives of our people in a way that they have long been looking forward to. This is the first budget that the, that is the president's design, uh, that is the president's uh, own to drive and implement. Uh, and this is something we're very excited about. And I'm sure over the course of the, the hour, we'll be able to look at some of the things that Nigerians can look forward to, uh, to uh, you know, really benefiting from within this, uh, this new budget. Right. So before we go into the 2024 budget and all that is in there for Nigerians and also the president's broadcast this morning, uh, Nigerians would like to know what hope is there for a better Nigeria in 2024? There's tremendous hope, uh, and that is not uh, simply the statement of a government spokesperson. Uh, this is reality. Uh, when you look at uh, what uh, Mr. President put in place at the, in the latter part of 2023 with respect to the new investments he's attracted from around the world, uh, with respect to the agreements he's signed across multiple sectors uh, with major foreign, uh, foreign firms, uh, you would know that 2024 is the year of manifestation. Uh, so, for example, let's be practical about this. Uh, if you look at the electric power sector, uh, President Bola Metinubu uh, observed uh, the signing with his uh, counterpart, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, of the accelerated performance agreement with uh, Siemens Energy. Uh, this has to deal, has to do with the end-to-end uh, -end modernization and reconstruction of the nation's electric power transmission grid uh, over the course of the next 18 to 24 months. Uh, the reason why this is important is because we currently have in the country approximately 12 to 13,000 megawatts of uh, power generation capacity, but we have long been held back by uh, two major factors, one being an inefficient and uh, really a decrepit uh, electric power transmission grid that had been uh, really neglected and devoid of significant uh, turnaround over the course of the last several decades. Then the second factor being uh, really a limited uh, distribution infrastructure with respect to, you know, injection substations around the country, with respect to, uh, you know, uh, thousands of kilometers of power lines in the country that need to either be newly installed or totally uh, replaced altogether. Uh, you combine those factors. Once you resolve that, then you're able to now wheel out the, the 12 to 13,000 megawatts of power that you're able to generate within the country, which is not being generated right now because power generation companies have to purchase uh, gas in order to generate their power because these are gas-fired power plants for the most part. Uh, and that means that they are putting out a major expense in procuring this gas to generate the power. And then you don't have an end user, uh, they, an individual customer or an industry at the end of the process consuming that power because it's not being effectively wheeled on a transmission grid or through the distribution infrastructure uh, that needs to be put in place. And obviously, I don't want to go too much into history, but a lot of this has to do with a failed privatization exercise in 2013 in which uh, individuals who did not have, and I don't want to use a broad stroke here because this is not, uh, this is not, uh, you know, unanimous. There were some exceptions. We, we did have some successful bidders who are doing a great job, uh, such as uh, Transcorp under uh, Tony Elumelu, uh, Gary Gu under, uh, you know, uh, Femi Otedola, and many, many others uh, who have done a, a really great job turning around the assets that they uh, procured during that privatization. But unfortunately, within the distribution uh, subsector of the industry, a lot of the, uh, the distribution jurisdictions that were uh, privatized to these private individuals were privatized to people who did not either have the technical competence nor the uh, capital base to actually invest in the, uh, the reform uh, and reconstruction uh, of those facilities. And as a result of that, since privatization 2013, we've not seen the upgradation that we expected in, in, in distribution in, uh, you know, across the board the way that it was promised. But be that as it may, uh, uh, starting uh, with the government of President Mohamedou Buhari, major investments were made uh, in terms of providing counterpart facilities to these uh, distribution companies that are now currently under 
uh, private sector management, but because government still retains approximately a 40% shareholding uh, in the uh, privatized distribution companies, we still do have a say at the table, even though it's not a majority say. So we are able to uh, provide mechanisms for them to be able to come up with the funding that will now allow them uh, to provide the upgrades that they should have been providing since 2013 if they had been sincere investors uh, from the beginning. Of course, that had not been the case, uh, but we are now stepping into a system to do that. Now, with all of that said, uh, what is currently under full government control, obviously, is the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, uh, which is why we are able to sign unilaterally with Siemens Energy to say, uh, our transmission grid is now fully available for end-to-end -end modernization and reconstruction. That is what the president uh, has committed to, uh, and we are looking forward to uh, that process being concluded over the course of the next uh, 24 months within the first term of his administration. So Nigerians have a lot to look forward to with respect to that uh, in the power industry. And we know that once you get electric power right, uh, you're going to be resolving, uh, you know, 80 to 85 percent of the challenges facing uh, our businesses in the country, uh, both from uh, the, the, the micro and micro, small and medium scale enterprises uh, to even the large uh, industry across the country. So that's going to be significant in 2024. Uh, and of course, Mr. President uh, articulated that very well and clearly uh, this morning uh, in his uh, New Year's address. Uh, I think in addition to that, though, uh, as we move into the new year, uh, the president's not waiting uh, to uh, get involved directly with the livelihoods of entrepreneurs across our country and the staff that they employ and the families that they rely on the staff uh, employed within the various MSMEs across our country. What do I mean? Uh, as of this month, uh, this month of January 2024, uh, under the leadership of His Excellency, Mr. President, and with his approval, uh, the Bank of Industry will be providing a facility of about 75 billion naira that is going to be dedicated exclusively uh, for micro, small, and medium-scale enterprises across all 36 states of the Federation and the FCT, uh, across all wards and local government areas of the country, uh, where, through a very transparent process, uh, our small business uh, owners will be able to, to approach the Bank of Industry uh, to secure loans of uh, a minimum of 1 million naira and a maximum of 10 million naira per business. Uh, this is going to be done on a single digit interest rate, which is really very important. Uh, we're looking at about 9% interest on those loans uh, with a moratorium of about 12 months, meaning they will not have to repay the, the, uh, those loans 12 months from the date of disbursement, which is very important in terms of providing some breathing space and some leeway for our small businesses uh, to be able to, you know, use the money to generate new revenue so that over the course of the 12 month moratorium, they're in a comfortable position to begin paying it back. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the, the, the loan uh, tenure, you're looking at about three to five years uh, for total repayment. So it's, it's really business friendly. It's, right. it's keyed in on the segments of our population that are not as prosperous or as well-to-do, uh, which is really the mass uh, of our small uh, and micro enterprise owners across the country. And so this is an exciting uh, uh, you know, development that will be manifesting this month across all parts and crevices of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, under the able leadership of His Excellency, Mr. President. So he's not just dealing with kind of the substructure, uh, the superstructure of the economy. When you talk about the electric power sector, the need to energize uh, our businesses, small, medium, and large, uh, in an affordable way, without uh, you know, relying on diesel power generation and the like. He's also focusing in on making sure that our businesses have the capital they need to not only sustain existing jobs, but to also expand those jobs, to employ more Nigerians, to get more Nigerians uh, at work building our economy. And of course, you know, that when you're empowering these MSMEs, they're not putting the money in a bank account and sitting down on their hands. What they're doing okay. is they're taking that capital and they're now uh, using that capital to buy parts, to buy uh, other inputs from vendors across our country. So now you have the multiplying economic effect across the economy of the of the of the housing developer, for example, a uh, social housing developer who is purchasing sand. Uh, from uh, you know a, a street side vendor somewhere in Onitsha or somewhere in Lagos or somewhere in Kano. Uh, these are the vendors that are going to be benefiting indirectly from the resources being made available from the bank of industry, not to speak of the direct uh, involvement. So you have that to look forward to. 
I think if you look uh, even deeper uh, into uh, what Mr. President has to offer within uh, this new 2024 uh, Appropriation Act, uh, you would be excited to know that uh, already uh, under the leadership of the uh, Honorable Minister uh, of Lands and Housing, uh, architect uh, Musa Dangiwa, we have an arrangement already signed, in, uh, signed into effect, uh, a, a public-private partnership uh, with a major housing developer uh, who is going to be, and this is just one intervention out of so many others that, that, that will be coming to, to bear, that will be uh, brought to bear in this year, 2024. But uh, that agreement essentially is going to allow for the development of 100,000 houses uh, over the course of the next 12 months across the country, beginning with phase one in Abuja of 20,000 houses. Now, it's been, it's, been, it's been actuated down to the amount of jobs created per unit. Uh, so each unit, each housing unit that's going to be developed is going to have about 25 Nigerians that are going to be newly employed on the basis of that unit being constructed. Uh, so you, you multiply that uh, times, uh, you know, 100,000 houses, and you're looking at uh, approximately uh, 2.5, uh, you know, 2.5 million or so uh, uh, new jobs. And again, that does not uh, bring into uh, account uh, the, the multiplying uh, effect of having uh, you know, multiple uh, vendors that are going to be supplying inputs like glass, sand, uh, cement, uh, iron products, uh, and, and obviously plumbers and carpenters and many others who are going to be uh, involved in that process. So in housing, you have that. Phase one, 20,000 in the FCT within the year. And then, of course, the remaining 80,000 spread across uh, six geopolitical zones. Again, that's just one housing initiative out of several. Uh, that uh, that uh, that can be referred to, but that's the one uh, that we are going to be counterpart funding within uh, the appropriation of 2024. Then I think if you look uh, around uh, the country, what you're going to be seeing is the president's active intent uh, across all sectors within captured in the 2024 appropriation of labor intensive sectors. These are the sectors that uh, that have to do with direct labor new job creation across the country. So yes, I've already cited housing, for example, which directly creates the jobs of those actually constructing the housing units, and then the indirect jobs being created because of all the vendors that are gonna be patronized in the process across all senatorial districts, across all local government areas of the country. Then the direct MSME capitalization, putting money in the hands of entrepreneurs who are gonna multiply that money and multiply jobs with the money that they're receiving. Uh, this is gonna be important all has to do with labor intensive investment. Then I think what is very, very key is when you look at the, the breakdown of the budget, what you'll find is that, and where we really benefit from having a president who is an accountant, a president who is a financial wizard, a financial engineer, what we now have is we have a budget deficit with the president signing this 2024 Appropriation Act, the budget deficit with the stroke of his green pen, which is very powerful, the budget deficit has has uh, has reduced from six uh, percent down to three percent. In addition to that, this budget uh, under the first budget under the leadership of Mr. President is now going to have uh, our recurrent expenditure coming in at about thirty percent, as against uh, thirty-five percent for capital and total rebalancing. You know, before now it was difficult to get uh, capital expenditure. Uh, favorably, uh, uh, you know, contrasted with recurrent expenditure because recurrent had always been high and capital investment had, al had not always uh, met up with that. We are now gradually rebalancing that under the leadership of Mr. President to ensure that the, the bulk of our resources, as much as possible, is going to be directed toward uh, capital investments, uh, investments that will reap a return, not just in terms of job creation, not just in terms of expanded tax revenues, but also in terms of the hard infrastructure on the ground required uh, to take to, to you know transform our economy into one that is inclusive, into one that is labor intensive, uh, into one that really has a, 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 a meaning uh, for every Nigerian and not just uh, the wealthy crop of Nigerians. Uh, you know, that our economy had long kind of exclusively tailored itself toward. So this is really some of what Nigerians can expect, and there's so much more that we can get into in 2024. Uh, right. So you've just um, elaborated on some of the president's plans for the country, also outlined in that, in that broadcast this morning. But how mm -hmm. hopeful should right. Nigerians be on this? 
Well, I think there are several reasons to be very hopeful. One is that the president is not a man who leaves things to chance. Uh, he's not someone who says, I'm, I'm going to trust this minister to do the right thing, and I'm going to, you know, uh, turn my face and focus on something else. That is not who we hired, who we elected as president. Uh, we elected a man who is very hands-on, uh, who demands empirical evidence of productivity and service delivery at an excellent world-class standard. Uh, and in, in keeping with that, uh, he was very clear in his speech this morning that he had specifically, uh, you know, uh, assigned the role, as we, as we, as we like to affectionately call uh, our sister, the, the special advisor to the president on policy and coordination, uh, Hadiza Bala Usman, the school prefect, uh, the one who the president has assigned the power uh, to go into the ministries, departments, and agencies of the federal government at any point in time uh, to be able to get uh, detailed progress reports on individual specific projects, ensuring that uh, in relation to the appropriation that has been given to that particular ministry, department, or agency for that particular uh, uh, road project, for that particular dam project, for that particular social investment scheme, that the results on the ground empirically show that that money is being effectively and judiciously uh, expended toward an actual outcome that benefits Nigerians rather than uh, some middleman or some contractor and this kind of a thing. So we have now somebody whose office is, is going to be ICT driven. She's already putting in place ICT uh, uh, based platforms of, of, of uh, project uh, delivery and tracking. Uh, so that we can ensure that uh, we don't just simply appoint ministers and give them a whole bunch of power and resource to do what they like. Uh, we appoint ministers to very carefully and very uh, integrously steward the resources of the Nigerian people under the leadership of Mr. President. And he's holding their feet to the fire, and he's ensuring that there are people and institutions in place to ensure that their feet are held to the fire. So that's uh, point number one in terms of why Nigerians can be hopeful uh, with respect to how this budget is going to be implemented. Uh, the second leg of that is also understanding that we, 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 we hired a, 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 a man uh, who will fire people. Uh, I, I don't want to be, uh, there's, no, there's no need to sugarcoat it. Uh, this is a man with a proven track record of knowing what good talent is and what, uh, and what uh, is not what he wants uh, with respect to uh, you know, capacity, competence, and service delivery. If he's not getting what he wants, it doesn't matter how close you are to the president. Mm. Uh, this is not somebody who will say, oh, I've known this man for 30 years, so it doesn't matter whether he's failing in his job. This is not that man. No. This president will sack you quickly. Uh, so this is the president we have. Now, he's not, he's not rash. He's not... Uh, uh, emotional or sentimental in the way that he goes about his business. He's going to give you time. He's going to assess you. He's going to watch you. He's going to monitor you. Uh, but at the end of the day, if he's given you the time and he's been patient with you uh, to a fair extent and you have not delivered on the mandate that he has given to you, you will lose your job. And there's no, there's no two ways about that. There's no friendship about that. You can be friends uh, after he has, uh, he has disengaged you. So that is how uh, this president is. This is how he thinks. And this is why Nigerians can be very confident and optimistic that the, this administration is going to not only make promises. No, we are going to ensure that uh, those promises are kept, that those promises are manifest in the lives of our people uh, with the provision of not just quality infrastructure, uh, not just the, the provision of social amenities, but really an environment that uh, allows for every Nigerian, irrespective of their income, irrespective of their social status, irrespective of who they know, they will have an opportunity to make it as long as they're willing to work hard uh, and, and abide by a rules-based uh, economic system that he is uh, very carefully crafting uh, for, for the 200 million plus Nigerians at home and abroad. Uh, he did it in Lagos. He's going to do it again nationally, and he's in the process of doing it right now. We're no longer in the promise phase. We're in the implementation phase, and Nigerians are getting ready to, ma uh, to see the manifestation of that in this year, 2024. Fantastic. Now, uh, looking at the highlights of promises uh, made by the president uh, in that broadcast this morning, I mean, the president talked about boosting food supply. And you and I know right. that insecurity remains a challenge to food production, especially. So how is government tackling this? 
You're absolutely correct. I, I, I think uh, in view of some of the recent tragedies we've seen, particularly in the north, uh, in, in the uh, north central, uh, it is true that uh, there is still quite a bit of work to do, uh, which is why under the leadership of His Excellency, Mr. President, uh, the National Security Advisor, uh, Malamnuhu Ribadu, uh, is, is a man who doesn't get to sleep very much uh, in coordinating uh, all aspects of our intelligence, uh, you know, gathering institutions with our, uh, our armed forces, with uh, the police, ensuring that everyone is seeing through a, a single window uh, that information and intelligence is being effectively gathered and effectively shared, uh, and that operations are effectively coordinated toward uh, ensuring that uh, we, uh, in, in a very uh, uh, synergized fashion, uh, deal conclusively uh, with the various security threats confronting our nation. Obviously, we've seen a lot of progress when you look at the Southeast uh, and, and the level of agitation there when Mr. President took office as against what it is right now. Uh, and of course, across the Northwest and the Northeast, there has been a very significant uh, Ms. Angelali, are you there? All right, then. I'm speaking uh, with a special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Adjurin Gilali. When we return, uh, we'll take a look at how the president, uh, what more incentives is the government providing to attract more investments into the country? Please stay with politics tonight. <laughs>